Oh, why not tonight? Oh, why not tonight? Will thou be saved? Then why not tonight? I want to thank the Lord again for this great privilege of um, coming together at uh, this online Bible study. It's a blessing to have you with us again this Monday. I am so happy that the Lord has kept his word to us and has kept both of us alive so that we can interact again on the pages of the Bible as we study his word further. Uh, you will recollect that last week we couldn't finish the outline um, on the gospel and religion. And we promised that we're going to take off from where we left off last week. And that's what we're going to do today under God. My name again is Shek Maria from Porter's House Christian Mission. I trust that the Lord will bring his blessings upon you. Why not tonight? I want you to bow your heads as we uh, pray together. Eternal Father, we want to thank you again for this beautiful day. It's the beginning of another month and we are very blessed for bringing us here. Solomon in his days had 12 officers and he assigned an officer 
to bring all that we need for a month. So one officer per month. And that officer, when he comes on a month like this, supply all that Solomon and his household we need. And at the end of the month, disappears. Only to reappear again at the turn of that month. He will go and gather for 11 months what Solomon will need for one month. So we also know that you have officers for each month. And so we know that the officer in charge of this third month that is called March, we bring everything that we need for this month in the name of Jesus. So we speak blessings and we speak peace into this month. And we speak that the Lord God Almighty who has brought you to us will make you to bring these blessings unto us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Lord, we trust you that you are going to bring your word to us again this day. And you are going to grant unto us understanding of your word. Lord Jesus, as you affirm in our heart that Christianity, which is actually the gospel of Jesus or the gospel of the kingdom, which is also the faith of Christ, and faith in Christ is not a religion. We trust, O oh God, that you are going to give life unto this, and you're going to cause it, O oh God, to transmit life unto everyone listening to this, either on Facebook, on YouTube, or via MixLR. Thank you, Father. We give you all the praise, for we have prayed with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to appreciate the Lord again for this great privilege that we have to be together. Um, last week, we uh, were looking at the first part. Now it's uh, part 1A. Yes, that's what we did last week as we look at the gospel and religion. And I read the book of Galatians chapter 3. I am going to be very quick because uh, of time to read Galatians chapter 3. I may attempt to read uh, as many of the verses. I ought to read verses 1 to 29. I'll see if I could take all of that um, within the little time that we have now. Oh, foolish <clears throat> Galatians, who hath bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you. These only will I learn of you. Received ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Are ye so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are ye now made perfect by the flesh? Have ye suffered so many things in vain, if it be yet in vain? He therefore that ministereth to you the Spirit, and worketh miracles among you, doeth he, by, doeth he it by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith? Verse 6, even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness, Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture, foresee that God would justify the hidden through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, I indeed shall all nations be blessed. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, 
it is evident for the just shall live by faith and the law is not of faith but the man that doeth them shall live in them christ hath redeemed us from the cause of the law being made a cause for us for it is written cost is everyone that hangeth on a tree that the blessing of abraham might come on the gentile through jesus christ that we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith brethren i speak after the manner of men though it be but a man's covenant yet if it be confirmed no man disannulleth or addeth thereto. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promise made. He saith not unto seeds as of many, but as of one unto thy seed, which is Christ. And this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ, the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul that that it should be, that it should make the promise of non-effect. For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more of promise. But God gave it to Abraham by promise. Wherefore then served the law? It was added because of transgressions. Till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. And it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Now a mediator is not a mediator of one. But God is one. Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith is come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. Verse 29. And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed. And here's according to the promise. May the Lord bless this word in our hearts in the name of Jesus. Now, it is, um, it may not be possible for me to go over issues that um, the Holy Spirit raised with us um, last week. But I think by being religious. It was not religion that mediated between them and God. God did not come close to them because they were religious. No. God became their friends and they walked with God by faith. Because we saw that Abel offered a more excellent sacrifice than Cain's by faith. We saw that the sacrifice of Cain was excellent 
But the Bible that we read, which we are going to read again today, Hebrews chapter 11, showed to us that the sacrifice of Abel was more excellent. And I said, I could infer that it's possible that Cain offered his own sacrifice religiously. Possibly for fear. Possibly for consequences of not bringing it. Pushed him to offer. But Abel offered by faith. He had faith in God and his own sacrifice was more excellent. Don't forget that we have been talking about repentance. And repentance has brought us to the issue of forgiveness. And we have also started to see that it is possible for a man to be forgiven his sin and yet is not delivered from his sin. And we saw that what can bring both forgiveness and deliverance from sin, forgiveness of sin and deliverance from sin is the gospel, which is the faith of Jesus. And we did say that the only reason for which the gospel could save a man or could help a man from sin is because the gospel is not religion. Religion deals with activities, but the gospel deals with the nature. Religion may deal with the leaves and the fruit of a tree, but it cannot deal with the root of the tree. The fruit of the tree and the and not by fame. No, it's by faith. And we saw that that was how Enoch also walked with God. And it was not. For God took him. His translation was not because he fulfilled some religious rites. No. It was simply by faith. So these people, these men, never practiced religion. And as we're rounding off, we saw Abraham. And that's what brought him into the life of faith. And so I am going to, I'm going to um, start from that point. I read the outline, the last paragraph I read. I will read it now, last week. And it starts with religion. It's on second page, uh, the first column. And I'm going to start from that point. Religion, which is equivalent. So if you have your outline there, and if you... If you don't have it on our platform, I want to ask that those of you who, who have access to the outline last week, you can bring it back forward or you bring it forward so that others, but the media here will, will put it on our screen so that we can see and be on the same page as I read. So I'm going to read from religion which is equivalent to idol worship. Religion which is equivalent to idol worship comes with unbearable burden unto, the, unto their inventors. Do not be part of it. He who makes bears. What God makes, he bears. And what you make, you also bear. I read Habakkuk chapter 2, 18, 19 last week. I read Isaiah 46, 1 to 7 last week. I'm not going to read it now. But I just, I just read this so that I can give it an interface. That religion is, is man's invention. And that's why it has become a body for man. That Isaiah says, people, they brought gold and silver from their pockets. And they use it to form a god. And the god they form, they fall down to worship it. The gold was from their pocket. The silver was from their, from their pocket. They fashioned an image that is lifeless and then they fall down to worship that idol. Unfortunately, once they want to move from a place to another place, they, are, they want to carry that idol. But God said, I make you, I'll care, I will carry you. Right from the womb, I bore you, I carried you when you were in the womb. When you were born, I'll carry you, even until you are all gray, I will yet carry you. So when it is, it is your making, then please be sure that you will have to bear the body. The best that God can do for you is to help you put it on your head so that you keep carrying it. Religion is man's invention and it has remained man's body. And I told you, as we are going to see, 
that religion is not just going to church to worship. It's not just going to a mosque to worship. It's about belief. System of government is religion. It, it regulates activities. And I told you that part of, of it is that if you, if you drive, don't drink. Now, a man may not drink as he's driving because he's afraid of what the law could do if caught. Or he could be afraid that he may have, he may be involved in motor traffic accident if he drinks while driving. However, that observation will not stop him from drinking. He may still be drinking when he's not driving. That does not make him a good man. That's the truth. Now, that's what religion does. But I want to quickly flow into today's um, uh, uh, lesson. Don't forget that we didn't finish called Abraham out of the religion of his forebears into the faith of Christ, of which Jesus said, Abraham rejoiced to see. If you read John chapter 8, verse 55, you will hear Jesus Christ say, say, Abraham rejoiced to see my day. Maybe I should not read it. Um, it's just a quick reference. Um, you can read it on your own. Hence, the nation of Israel, which eventually emerged from Abraham, was not born on the wings of religion. For God will not make the mistake of calling Abraham out of fruitless religion into another fruitless religion. I, I tell you the truth. I tell you the truth. God will not make such mistake. I'm going to read on, but please take note of that. That the nation of Israel was not founded on religion. Abraham was not involved in religion. When he began to work with God, he never practiced any religion that we know. What he practiced was faith. God has said to Abraham, leave thy country, thy kindred, and thy father's house. And go to a land I will show you. And he stepped out in faith and by faith. Simply trusting the Lord who had spoken to him. He didn't know where he was going. Yet he set out. Religion will tell you what you will gain. Religion will tell you what you will lose. If you don't do what it tells you to do. It will tell you the consequences but it will never empower you to do it. That's religion. Religion is such a thing that I don't think anybody that is reasonable should attach his life to. Abraham took step by faith. He was helped by the message he had. He set his gaze on God who commanded him to leave Haran and travel to a place he didn't know. He stepped out in faith. So, that is not a religion. That is a lifestyle. He walked with God by faith. And it was on that the nation of Israel was founded. Abraham was the progenitor of the nation of Israel. That nation was not founded on religion. It was founded on faith. It will interest you as we continue that as a matter of fact, if you don't mind, what the devil used against Adam and his wife was to hijack their faith and switched it to himself. It was simply, it was simply faith. Permit me your faith. How do I mean? It's sim same thing happened to, to, the, to the man. His eyes were opened. By, permit me, simple faith. 
in what the serpent told them. And it changed their course of life. It's it trusting the message of the serpent. It was not a religion. It wasn't. It was the way God had worked with them. Adam and his wife followed the Lord by faith. They just simply believed the word of God. And the enemy came and took that. And that's how religion was formed. So the enemy shifted our gaze from God and his word. And then he had put it in philosophies of men. Thinking by observing those things, we might receive help. It's not true. There is no help in it. God could not make that mistake of calling Abraham out of a religion and asking him to come into another religion. No, no, no. And I'm telling you again, I am not asking you to leave your religion and come into another religion. Your religion never helped you. There is no other religion I can introduce you to that will help you. What I'm asking you to do is to leave your religion and come into faith. The faith of Christ. The faith in Christ. It is called the gospel. Some people call it Christianity. Can I read further? Can I read further? The nation of Israel was also not born on the heels of the Jewish law, which Moses midwifed. For the nation had been before the law. Even the children of Jacob did not think that they were just family like others. They spoke of, of themselves as a nation. As they considered what Shechem did to their sister as folly in Israel. Can I read that to you? It's interesting. Each time I read that passage, I'm amused. I just look at faith. The children of Jacob were not also practicing religion. They were walking by faith. The faith of their fathers. And so you will hear them say, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of Israel. By its faith. It's not a religion. If you know the religion they practice, maybe you can help me out. Maybe you can tell me. This man walked by faith. But I want to read chapter 34 of the book of Genesis and just verse 7. They said something that is worth noting. And the sons of Jacob came out of the field when they heard it. The sons of Jacob. The children of Jacob. Jacob was their father. They returned from the field and they heard that Shechem slept with Dinah, their sister. The Bible says, when they heard it, and the men were grieved and they were very wroth because he had wrought fully in Israel in lying with Jacob's daughter, which thing ought not to be done. <laughs> I don't want to go into this now because this is not the focus. But please just note, the people, these sons of Jacob, from Reuben, possibly to Benjamin, including Joseph, when they returned and they heard what Shechem did to their sisters, to their in, in Israel, excuse me, it is madness for you to be engaged in premarital sex. It is not first and foremost a spiritual matter. It is first and foremost a psychiatric case. Madness. Foolishness. For you to be engaged in premarital sex. If you are, if you belong to this nation, the nation of God, it is madness. It is foolishness. It is stupidity for you to be engaged in it. 
But I said I don't want to go there. Because it is not the focus. It is just the way these men saw themselves that attracted me here. That this is fully in Israel. Yet a family. So the nation of Israel had been before Moses brought the law on Mount Sinai. They had recognized themselves as a nation already before Moses came. Before Moses was born. Levi, who was the grandfather of Moses, was part of this team. Moses had not been born. And the law was not given until after 80 years of Moses' birth. So the nation Israel came to be not by the law. Not by religion. The nation came to be on the heels of faith. It spoke to Pharaoh in Egypt. And then you ask, what was his religion? No, no, no religion. It was faith. The Bible remarked that it was by faith. Faith. There was no religion. It was faith. They walk with God by faith. They walk with God by trusting him, relying upon him, believing him. It's not by observation of certain rules. Now, you ask, what, was they, what were they referring to? That this thing ought not to be sold, ought not to be done. It was faith. It's not that it was written somewhere, thou shall not sleep with the daughter of Jacob. No. There was there was. This walk with God that made them to know what God wants and what God does not want. They had, because of their relationship with God, they understood the mind of God. They commune with God not on the basis of religion. No, 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 no. I tell you, no. It was by faith. By faith. By faith, God introduced himself to Moses as the God of his fathers. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses demanded to know him, for him to walk with him. That's the way those men walked. That's the way those men lived. And that's exactly how we must live. Even now. Can I, can I quickly read so that we can look at God's plan for other nations? Therefore, the nation of Israel was born by faith and born by faith. Given back to by faith and carried by faith. That which started by faith must be sustained by faith and must be consummated by faith. That's the way it works. Let me quickly look at God's plan for all the nations. I'm sure the media are showing it to us on our screens. It is important to point out here that God planned to extend what is started with Abraham and through Abraham to all nations of the earth. The Bible says, and if you follow the reading the other time, in Galatians chapter 3, verses 6 to 9, I would like to read that passage very quickly. Galatians chapter 3, verses 6. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham, not those who are of religion. The Jewish religion does not make a man a child of Abraham. No, it is only those who are of faith. How did Abraham walk with God? By faith. Not by set of rules, by faith. Abraham, take your son, thy holy son, whom you love, and go to Moriah, to one of the mountains I will show you, and there offer him as a burnt 
sacrifice. And in the morning, he saddled his ass, clave the wood, took his son with two young men, and he traveled three days to Moriah. He raised an altar. The son asked him, Father, I could see knife. I could see wood. I could see fire. Where is the lamb for sacrifice? The man of faith said to his son, The Lord shall provide himself a lamb for the sacrifice. Man of faith. And he raised an altar, took his son, tied him, and he wanted to slaughter that son on the altar. By faith. When Paul was writing, I think, he said, he believed God that God is able to raise that child up by faith. That's not religion. You may be foreseen that God will justify the hidden through faith. The scripture, the Bible, saw it ahead of time that the hidden, those are so what God preached to Abraham in the, at the very beginning, as we read last week in Genesis chapter 12, what God promised Abraham, what God preached to Abraham was not religion. It was faith. God didn't call Abraham out of a religion and brought him into a new religion. No, 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 no. By faith, he brought him into faith. Now look at the, this word of God. So then, they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. Every man that is of faith is, permit me, lumped with the faithful, with Abraham that was full of faith, and the two are blessed together. So if you are of faith, if you receive faith, which is the gospel, if you receive faith, the faith of Christ, the faith in Christ, you are also walking on the same platform with Abraham. You are blessed as Abraham was. God preached to Abraham the gospel. Say, indeed shall all nations be blessed. So this thing that you have come to embrace, Abraham, is not going to be for you. I am going to accept Send it to other nations. People will take a cue from you, and from you, you will set the standard. And indeed, the blessings of all nations shall be activated. It was faith. And, and, I, and I wish I could just tell you. It was faith, and it is still faith. Jesus said, when I return, shall I find faith on earth? Faith is what you will be looking for. All right. Now, it is interesting to note from the translation above that what delivered Abraham from the power of religion was the gospel and nothing more. There is no other power. Religion gives you false hope. Religion uses you and don't. God rescued Abraham from the power of religion which his father Terah practiced. I told you that traveling to Canaan was Terah's vision. He left the all the Chaldees with Abraham, Lord, Sarah, and they were traveling together to Canaan. They got to Haran. He stopped at Haran. It was at Haran. His own son, the father of Lot, called Haran, died. They worship idol. And I told you, I am thinking that that man took off by faith, but midway, he began to practice religion, or he reverted to his religious activities. He couldn't continue that journey. And so many people have added so much weight to themselves that they have become overweight, as it were, overloaded. Because they started a journey by faith, but now they want to complete it by religion. So they have carried so much load that is weighing them down. 
and they couldn't continue. I don't want you to die in Haran. No. I want you to get to Canaan. That's the ultimate goal. I like to read because I want to push this to a point where we can pray again and then we'll come back by God's grace next class to look at to look at a part two of the gospel and religion. Sadly, before the blessings of God through Abraham could reach all the nations of the earth, religion of all kinds have taken over the earth. Some in form of idols, while others are in form of ideas, ideologies, philosophies, beliefs, creeds, systems of government, and so on. <laughs> I tell you, democracy is a religion. Communism is a religion. It was people, people turned, turned the law to religion. And Jesus lamented that they made the word of God of none effect by the traditions, by their traditions, by the traditions of the elders. They made that which was an addendum which God put in place to keep them in shape so that the drift will not be too much by the time the seed, which is Christ, will come. By the time faith will be reintroduced again to them, the, the 430 years they spent in Egypt had, had affected orientation. They had lost touch with how to walk with God. They had imbibed ideas from the neighboring nations. And they have started to practice religion. You recollect, if you are a student of the Bible, that when Israel demanded for a God from Aaron, he didn't have something else to show them except what he saw Egypt worshipped, calf. He made a golden calf, said, these are the gods that brought you out of Egypt. Religion. 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 God saw that their hearts had been completely taken away from faith, from the faith. So God put the law in place as a first aid to guide them, to keep them in shape, waiting for the seed of the woman which he promised in the Garden of Eden that will come to bruise the head of the serpent. That seed was and is Christ. We read it in Galatians chapter 3. That's why he never talked about seeds as in many. He talked about seed as in one. And Christ is that seed. The law was to, sometime when somebody had a broken limb, you could tie it or maybe there was a snake bite. You tie something to ensure that the venom does not travel through the entire body. It's the first aid. is to keep the man alive so that they can receive medical help or until he receive medical help. That first aid is not treatment. You don't tie um, a rope around the leg of a man that is bitten by snake and then consider it to have treated the snake bite. Excuse me, it cannot. He can only sustain that man for a little time so that help can come. That's not it. That's not how to treat snake bite. No, no, I tell you no. That a man re receive a cut somewhere and is deep, maybe a scene of accident, and people That's now use cloth to tie bite. the wound to block no. the wound from no. 
being infected and to prevent further loss of blood. That's not treatment. You don't discharge that person from that point and say, you can go home. Your, your, your wound has been treated. You have not treated nothing. If you leave that man in that state, he will die. That's not treatment. He needed to get that proper medical attention. You can go home. Your, your, your the law was a first aid that were put in place to ensure that if the wound that, that Israel came out with in, in Egypt will not be contaminated, is to disinfect that wound. The law was so I do not, it, 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 it does not become something else. Take that to mean the way of life. No, 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 no. Israel turned it to be a way of life. But that's not their forebears never walked by that. No. I tell you, no. I, I, I'll read for that. And I'm trusting God that in our next study, we'll be able to look at it. But I'm still going to look at it a little bit today. I tell you, no. I, I, I These idols and we were allowed God by God, just as the law was allowed in Israel, to hold the fourth until faith will come. Galatians chapter 3. Now, can I, before I read Galatians chapter 3, take note by God of what just as the law was to be as religion. We're talking about idols. We're talking about ideas, we're talking about philosophies, we're talking about ideologies, we're talking about beliefs, we're talking about creed, we're talking about systems of government. All of these are things the enemy brought. We're talking about ideas, we're talking about philosophies, we're talking about ideologies, so as to keep what Ogun is to a Yoruba man is what the law is to an Israelite, for people, what the law is preventing to an Israelite a complete breakdown of law and order for people, so that before these people completely die, complete this can just have as first aid. And, and by the time faith is introduced, it will be very easy for faith to take off. It will meet them alive at that point. If you have a good doctor that could treat snake bites and the man that is beaten by snake cannot reach the man that could treat him, then the, the, the man is useless there. But if we can... had concluded. That's the matter. But the scripture so had concluded all under sin that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. Had concluded Look at verse 23. But sin. before faith came, that the promise so there was a time we were expecting faith Christ, to come. Before faith came, we were kept Look at under the law. But so if you don't mind, we were kept under Ogun. We were kept under a religion. Before faith came, shut up unto the faith which should afterward be revealed. You know, I, 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 wish, I wish I could find a translation. Can I read? Can I read religion. the Amplified Translation to you? This Bible says,
came. Now, before Shock. the faith came, we were perpetually guarded under the law, kept in custody, in preparation for the faith that was destined to be revealed, unveiled, disclosed. All right? Look at NIV. NIV say, before this faith came, we were held prisoners by the law, locked up until faith should be revealed. Look, sometime a, a, a man who is a suspect is arrested and then is kept in custody. Being kept in custody restricts his movement. But that is not the punishment for the sin he committed. It is to hold him down so that he can be tried. So that he found guilty while he's going through trial. When is final? It is to keep you so that you can receive the full punishment for your sin. This is what the law says. Any man found guilty of this offense should face. So you have to face this now. You have to face the hangman's news. Now, what the law did for Israel was to put Israel in custody so that Israel will not be lost until faith will arrive. That was what system of government tried to do. People who brought democracy brought democracy so that fairness can be on ground. We can deploy the, the resources for the good of the majority. Okay? And we can run a government of people by people and for the people. That, in a sense, can address our activities. It is to hold us in custody. It is to put checks on us until faith comes. When a man receives faith, when a man walks by faith, he receives a system of government that is higher than democracy. You may ask me, what is that? Maybe I will not talk about it now. Maybe I will not talk about it. Addition. Some people practice communism. Say everything is owned by the government. Great. But it's a religion to keep the people in prison so that when faith comes, they'll be able to know that he is before all things. And by him, all things are made, visible or invisible. That the government you serve is owned by God. Thrones and governments and powers owned by Jehovah. Faith, that's what faith teaches. I wish, I wish I could go on and on and on. But I know that time is not there. And I want, to, I want to push this to a point so that we can pray. We can pray. Verse, verse 20. Us unto Christ. The law was put in place to bring us unto Christ. If the law does a good work, it should bring Israel to Christ. If Ogun or Shogo or Oya or any idol you may know, if it will do well, it should lead you to Christ. It should bring you to Christ. It should deliver you to Christ. Any religion that takes possession of you is a fraud. To point us to Christ. The law was put in place to bring us unto Christ. See the word of God. That 
we might be justified by faith, not by law, not by Ogu, not by Obatala, not by Shogo, not by democracy, not by communism, not by a creed, not by a belief, not by a philosophy, not by an ideology. All of those will not justify a man or any man. The justification is by faith in Christ and by faith of Christ. I hope I'm not confusing you. All right. Let me read verse 25 so that I can find a place for us to pray. But after that faith is come, and if you don't mind, after that faith that we were waiting for is come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. Now, it was, it was in this spirit that Paul wrote in chapter 4 of Galatians, say, now I say that the heir, as long as he's a child, differeth nothing from his servant, though he be lord of all, but is under tutors and governors unto the time appointed of the father. The truth that you and I must, must understand is simple. The truth is the law or the idol or the idea or the philosophy or the belief or the creed or the system of government that you are, permits me, sold to is simply to bring you is to serve as a schoolmaster in permit me in in this in Yoruba land in our own days when I was young when you are the age of because you don't go to school until you are the age of six then and so you know we make a lot of troubles at home so they will go and register us in what they call lesson they have a Yoruba way of calling it. They call it Geliosimi, which we call Kretch today. Geliosimi means let there be peace at home. It is not school as it were. Then they call it lesson. So I will go in the morning, maybe around 8 o'clock, by 11 or 12, I'm back. They'll be teaching me what they will teach me in school. It is preparatory class. Hallelujah. It is just preparatory class. That religious, and unfortunately, even in the church now, we have rules and regulations. Religion that we put on ground and we enslave men's life by it. Now, I'm not saying you should be lawless. No, but every religion, permit me, every rule, every law, every order that does not bring men to Christ is a fraud. It will never bring justification. I like you to know that when faith, which we are going to see as Christ, when he arrived, we are no longer under the schoolmaster. We don't need the schoolmaster for me to, to walk by, with God. No, I walk with God by the faith of Christ because it is that faith in Christ that energizes me to walk the way God wants me to walk. Because that faith in Christ, just as it happened to Adam and his wife, that they were this faith transforms. When you exercise faith in Christ, it changes, you in, it changes you inside. When it changes you inside, you begin to live like Christ. And that's what we're looking for. And that's where we are going. Now, can I quickly read this as we go? And the Bible says, For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. I'll read this now. Idol worship and other forms of religion are meant to be schoolmasters, but they hijack the people from God. 
Now, do you know that now you can choose to eat human flesh because it's, you talk about human rights. Say, so, it's my right. That's, that's what I love to eat, human flesh. And people say, it's your right. You can eat. Now, a man can marry a man under human rights. Under human rights. Now, human rights is good. I tell you the truth. It's good. But it has become a religion and it has hijacked men from God. So, you could decide to walk naked. You say, you say well, it's transgender. Don't call him a, a boy. Don't call him a girl. Even though he has futures of a male, he can go into the bathroom of a girl and, and take his bath there among girls. He said that's what he thinks. He thinks he's a girl. Human rights. So, you, sex, what's your sex? said, you are, you are, you are abusing me. I can be a male today and tomorrow I can be a female. Just, just, it's just, it depends on my mood. And then you must not condemn him because he, he, has, he has that freedom, human right. Now, all of these are religion put in place to guide us. A man should be able to know his right in God, but not a right against how happening there. So somebody will come up tomorrow he said, it is his right. I want to kill 100 people per day. It's my right. That's what I want. And government should allow me to do so. So I kill anybody that I want because it's my right. It's my right to kill. It, that's what I believe in. I, I believe in killing people. You see, you, see, you see the error when it takes over the word of God in a man's life, in a man's heart, it becomes a trouble. Now, let me just close. However, just as God called Abraham out of the religion of his forefathers, using the power of the gospel, so he planned that through the same gospel, other nations of the earth will be called out of their self-invented religions to come into the same faith with Abraham, which is now consummated in Christ Jesus. We must not forget that this was how God started and other forms of human inventions for other nations became religion and now have a stronghold on man's mind blocking him from seeing God. I'd like us to pray. I want you to just talk to the Lord at this point in time. You might have been struggling with religion. Touch not, taste not, do this, do, don't do this, but you are still not justified. Because you lack power to walk in those things. And even where you have walked in it, there is still a vacuum in your life. Just like that rich young ruler. We would like to say that the Lord will deliver you from religion. And the spirit behind religion. And now embrace faith. The faith in Christ. The faith of Christ. That faith that does not make life cumbersome. That faith that we make you and bear you. That faith that tells you what to do and it goes ahead to do it. Taking it upon its own self to get it done for you. Look, that's just what faith is. Will you please say the Lord should save you from religion and from religious activities. And now, would you like to say, Lord, I embrace the faith of Jesus. Knowing full well that it is futile for me pursuing after religion. It will not bring me to perfection. It will not bring me justification. It will not bring me godliness. It will not release the burden off my shoulders. Lord, I come to embrace Christ and his faith. I am no longer under the schoolmaster. This schoolmaster will beat you until you are paralyzed. And will dump you in hell. That's what this schoolmaster did to people before now. And I don't think you should put yourself under that schoolmaster. Yeah, you say your name is Ogunbi. That's true. But you see, it was fraud for Ogun to have inserted his name into your name. Ogun was to keep you in custody until Christ will come. 
If I was to keep you in custody until Christ arrives, and since Christ came over 2,000 years ago, he should let go of you and release you to the very person that can really treat your wound, not only just hold it for a little time, before tetanus we enter into this, before infection we enter into this, it can treat the wound, disinfect it, and heal you up and give you a new lease of life. That's what Christ does. No other person can do it. He's the only one who led a sinless life. He's the only one born of a virgin. He's the only one who died and rose again. He's the only one that is alive forevermore. I tell you, there is no religious leader that did not die. But all of them died. They were buried. None of them resurrected. Only Christ resurrected. Why will you trust a man whose life ended in the grave and not the one who lived beyond the grave? If you say he's an ordinary man, say Jesus is just an ordinary man like you and I, maybe I will agree with you. Show me a man according to your understanding who is still alive up to now and he has not died. And you call that one ordinary? Like you? How long will you live before you die? Why don't you come to Jesus who led a life free of sin? And then it tells me he can free you from sin. Who died and rose. It tells me that he will raise you up. At the resurrection of the just. He has power over sin. He has power over death. He has power over the grave. He has power over hell. Bring your prayer point to a close. As I pray now. In Jesus name. We have prayed. Amen. Thank you father for this, um, this, this study. Thank you for opening our eyes to see these few things, oh God. We trust you that uh, as many as are dropping religion, even Christian religion, who are ob observing the rules and regulations, Christian as it were, rules and regulations, and yet not free from sin, uh, who are dropping such futile efforts, and they're embracing the faith of Christ today. Father, please save them in the name of Jesus. Abraham never obtained the promise by religion. No, no, no. It's not by works. It was by his faith. And it was accounted to him for righteousness. Lord, by faith also we receive Christ. We receive the work that Christ did on the cross. And we receive his teachings and his lifestyle to become our lives and our teaching. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. I want to thank you for being part of this study today. I'd like to tell you that we're going to come your way, God preserving our lives, you know, and if Jesus has not returned, same time next week, by God's grace, 6 p.m. Uh, West African time. And uh, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, it's been flashed on your screen and please click the notification button so that you can receive notification each time we are online or we upload new videos. Please share and tell others about it. Like our pages, share Mario for uh, Potter's House Media, like our pages and share and follow us and that will be a great, great blessing. And you can also subscribe to our Telegram channel, t.me slash you find it uh, very resourceful uh, for your journey in life. And I tell you that the helpline is there, 2 plus 234 um, 087-270-4630. You can call or you send an email to shegmaria at gmail.com. I'll be glad to uh, respond to you. God bless you till I see you. Don't forget, 10 o'clock, for those of you who are part of discipleship class, 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. We'll be on air again for disciples of all nations. God bless you.